would say for myself that in general, like my points um, are, um, I do lack a bit in organization, and um, it takes me a while to trust people. And um, eBoard and CC have like really experienced that. But since I am coming into this position for a second time. I am coming in with a more open mindset, ready to trust the people that I work with, ready to trust like, that they have um, what it takes to carry out the vision of our membership for all of our events, including Barrio. Yes. As for me, I tend to pull myself too thin. But really knowing that it is a committee and we're working and collaborating constantly with everyone and that I don't have to do everything myself. And really collaborating, especially with CC, with <coughs> the keyboard, with the membership, that everyone has their own input. I think for me, um, my biggest obstacle in this, through being in CC this year was definitely putting myself out there more. And I think that being a part of, or being, or being the part of uh, organizing and leading skit committee was really a huge help in helping me reach out of my shell. I got to meet such amazing people, and um, I was able to work with uh, my fellow skit directors who have been a huge help in not only helping me direct skit, but also you know helping me you know achieve personal growth for myself um, in regards to the rest of the organization. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so for me, I think um, the biggest thing about me is a fear to fail. Um, but what I have learned from that is that uh, Laban, there's always beauty in the struggle. And from first hand, uh, being a cultural co-chair this year, I have learned that it is vital to use the resources um, around you, our advisors, the committee, our e-board. Um, I just think that with them, we can create a better barrio fiesta with the organization skills. Um, this is not just a cultural director thing. It's a team effort. One person cannot um, control, or not control, but lead 100, this year it was 160 people. One person cannot do that. So I think the trust, uh, the trust needs to really be built between uh, many members of our leadership, and that's uh, what I learned. I think my biggest week, biggest weakest weakness about like my past experiences being a coach in my sophomore year is that I didn't feel like I had enough strength to speak up, and so that's where my weakness lied. In that position, I felt like my opinion was unworthy of being spoken, especially to the culture director. So I think that knowing that experience and also taking a year off to understand my strengths and my weaknesses and to empower myself on my own and heal. Um, I think that coming back as culture director, I definitely want to have my board, to have my culture committee, interns, all of them to be heard and to feel like they can they can openly talk to me with their most vulnerable, most, most vulnerable selves. Oh, uh, at this, you have a question? Great job, um, everyone, with an amazing cast of candidates in front of us. Um, excited for the future. Um, as you know, the majority of you have taken Barrio Fiesta, the class. Um, the class was founded by a Tatamahan um, member who's <coughs> spoiled on the Barrio stage day in and day out, with, um, like all of you have, and created the course. So in that sort of... Um, you know, academic, political ancestry, how would you help, uh, what ideas would you have to bring the Barrio Fiesta course closer to Barrio Fiesta, the production? I think, um, I brought it up in my platform, but the use of our community resources um, that starts with our USF community first before branching out. Um, utilizing the Barrio class as like an extension of our educational experience. Like on in Barrio Fiesta in practices, um, we get we touch very surface level. Um, the meanings behind the dances, the history, um, the stories of our people, um, you know, the stories that we're trying to tell. But in 
in the Barrio Fiesta class, like we get to dive deeper into it. And I think bringing the class like up to the production, bringing that atmosphere to the production is something that's going to be extremely important for um, the education of the educational journey of our members. Um, starting with, um, I'm gonna shout out Mario um, from the Barrio class who wrote, who started his reflection of um, our theme and he shared it without the, the Barrio cast and that inspired other Kasamas to share their reflections as well and spreading that story, spreading that knowledge of like our own selves because we are a part of that culture that's making history like is part of um, enhancing that collaboration with um, even just the Barrio class and the Barrio <coughs> is what you mean like bringing the more educational aspects to Barrio Fiesta as a whole? Is that like or just like, um, you know, <laughs> it kind of is just like right now I let the Barrio Fiesta class um, throw themselves into the practice, like the production space, and then I give them units for it, you know? And um, I come back and I supplement things of culture that we <coughs> may have not been answered. Um, but I would love to make it like um, somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that in order to prepare for Barrio Fiesta, we first have to like lay down what our culture is in like fall semester when we don't have anything for CC at all. So I mean like what I said in my platform, like I want to bring in <coughs> mental health awareness. I want to bring more Panay liminality into it. I want to like just bring more like education behind what we do and kind of incorporate what we learned for semester into our barrio time. And like, I know it's hard because Barrio Fiesta is like pretty time heavy and we're all kind of collectively in a state of chaos. But I think when we have the time where we regroup, where we used to say like, oh, what does this mean to you? What is our, what does Utanga La Ul mean to you? What does Pitiki Sama mean to you? What does Wulang Kiyam mean to you? Like those conversations, and having those people say what it means to them helps understand like the symbiosis of our Filipino American like community and our struggles and that we are not going through each of these things alone. We all are going through these at the same time, where they're at different spaces in time. Um, it's important to have those discussions and it's important to understand that like we're all from different places. We all have parents from different places, like you may have different ancestral tribes, you may have different history, um, your parents may have different history, and like I encourage you all to like ask your parents like, oh, is there like a meaning to why you guys came here? Is there a meaning behind your last name? Like how can I incorporate that and bring it to our space? Like for me, I am like, it took me 20 years to ask my mom, what does our last name even mean? So I mean, those, those conversations with your parents, those conversations we have here, those conversations we have with our mentors are so important to bring into our space because then we can all learn. Uh, <coughs> for me, I think that it's real, like Asa Mikaela said, it's really important um, to use our other resource that, resources that we have on campus, such as the barium class. <coughs> Something that I would like to do is maybe get those, <coughs> those students and teach some, uh, like, maybe a dance that they learn in your class and maybe choreograph one of the dances in Barrio Fiesta or even be part of the production in any aspect that they would like. One thing that I like about having um, the Barrio class students uh, come in and teach is that we're with our peers. We're all students and that's something that I think we need to realize is that we'll all learn together because in the end, like I said in my speech, um, later on, we're gonna be the teachers of our culture. Um, the teachers now, like no offense, but you guys are growing, <laughs> you guys are growing older. And <laughs> I like that, I like that. But it, it will soon be our job to take that responsibility to teach our Filipinx narrative. <laughs> um, I definitely agree with my candidates about um, the integration of Mario Fiesta class, and, um, but while I have not personally taken it, one thing I can talk about is I have taken uh, global Filipino literature as, as part of the YPSP program. And um, I think part of that was just reading a bunch of different stories that, that depicted 
you know, Filipino American experiences that we don't often hear about. I feel like that could be a really good um, <coughs> like outlet for people who are wanting to do skit or maybe skit writing. Um, it definitely uh, made an impact on me. So um, one thing that could be done is that we could have people from those classes, you know, lead some skit writing workshops or you know be a part of the PCN symposium. So it's an idea. of being in the class, I remember, I believe it was the first year of class and not the intro, when we had a guest speaker that helped break down every single aspect of Barrio Fias itself. For example, like we broke down skit and all the dances. I think maybe pushing that at an earlier notion and then having the Barrio class come help teach us and help us, um, everyone else, break down what it means to be in Barrio Fias. being a very like labor intensive position it takes a lot of time. I'm wondering how or even without being like commuter they're seeing bio, um, it it takes up a lot of time that can't just be done with one person. So I'm wondering how you plan on mitigating that um, stress of just spending a lot of time, how you plan on delegating tasks to people. <laughs> transparency is like an important thing, especially with um, delegating tasks. So knowing when one person can't handle something, another person can. And especially from my experience of in learning how to run production in my minor and also being a TA, just knowing when it is appropriate to delegate tasks is and uh, kind of going off of that, transparency is important and it's also equally important to make sure that those like issues are resolved as quickly as possible, like as early as possible. Um, admittedly, like there were some uh, stuff behind the scenes in Barrio that, um, that happened late in the game that we wish that we could have done sooner. So um, <laughs> and, um, hopefully in this next year, we get to you know, mitigate some of those issues sooner so that Mario, uh, the preparation of Mario is a lot smoother. Um, I think establishing, um, logistically, establishing a timeline. There are certain roles and responsibilities that the cultural director has that they work in direct collaboration with the treasurer, with the DCL, and establishing those like immediately when, when these tasks are supposed to get done so that you have an ample amount of time to do them. Also, keeping, not logistically, keeping a keen eye out and an open mind to be trusting. In total, eBoard is about 14 people, and CC, as of currently, is six. That's 20 people that are on your team, on your support, and be having coming in with an open mind and like a watchful eye to see, ooh, you're really good at that. Maybe I'll lean on you for support in the future so that when those kinds of issues arise, that you know who to go to ahead of time. Um, it's being like coming in, you may not have all the tools directly available to you, but being open to like receiving them and absorbing them. For me, as a nursing major, I know <laughs> firsthand, and being, cultural, being a cultural coach <coughs> this year, that it is hard work. But well, let me tell you something, all right? <laughs> there are three T's that will help me when elected as cultural director. First T, transparency. As a nursing major, I do get my schedules early. Something that I really want to implement is through the summer, I really want to work through that stuff because I don't want that to drag out. And I really want to make um, a tentative calendar, uh, so to say. A tentative calendar that I can already plug in and say, hey, these are the days that I cannot come in. Because a leader is not someone who stands there 24 hours and tells people what to do. A leader is someone who can delegate tasks and be transparent knowing when they can and cannot be there. Number two, trust. <laughs> like they said, um, it's really important to trust the people that are leading with you. I mean, if the members trust the board members enough, they, I mean, they voted for them, right? Um, I should trust them too, because not only am I a leader, but they are. And three, time management. Um, 
I know high school doesn't really matter, but <laughs> in high school, I was part of student leadership all four years. I was a triathlete. My last year, I was an ASB president for over 500 people. I know what it takes to do schoolwork, participate in sports, like Nate. He goes to basketball games. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, there's a point to this, there's a point to this. And he's, and he's executive director. Like Angela um, said, she's also a senior nursing major. I've talked to many of them, trust me, we've talked this out. You make time for the things that you love. And if there's one thing that I want you all to know is that I love this, all right? This is something that I am so passionate about. I wouldn't stand here as a nursing major telling you this is what I want. I want to work hard. I want to lean on all my members of them. I have no problem delegating tasks. But as long as I get to learn alongside all of you, that makes my heart happy, all right? <laughs> okay, I don't wanna cry. My, my last one, my last one. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep this time. Oh, are you keeping time? Um, so in my classroom, I kind of said like the order in which I wanted to lead. So if you guys like to see it, I'll go ahead. Um, so I wanted to put being an educator first, and then I wanted to be a server of the community second, and being a director and supervisor last. So the reason why I wanted to do that is because I don't want me to be the face of everything else that CC does because that's not what we're about. We're here as a community and my job here is just to make sure that whoever's on my team gets the job done. So like with being an educator first, like I can educate my team about how my like my experience as being a CC has went, like has gone and then actually like before this year I was Cultural director, and then I decided to drop because I need to figure out things on my own. But um, when I was preparing for that role, I had timelines, a timeline ready in order of like which month we're doing what specific thing, and then when we're doing what in order to not burn ourselves out because e board burnout is real, and like we have people to lean on. We have, like Michaela said, we have e board, we have <coughs> a number of people on CC, and like. What I want to do is make sure that my team understands <coughs> what I want for them, what they like, and hear what they want for me, so that we can create a middle ground that we are all equals, and that like we can do this all together, and that like with a good organization, organization that we can make like just to plug in like, oh, who's going to be here? Who's not going to be here? What can we do? What can we not do? And then I put in serve the community because. I'm here to serve all of you guys. So, and then, um, you said, like, how would I delegate tasks? Yeah. Just riffing off of what they said, like, we need to make sure that we're open communication, transparency. I wanted to say that, like, um, it would be helpful to have our CC meetings to be open and transparent, to have members to come in and see what's up, because it doesn't, like, we, nothing we ever do should be in secret. Like you guys should know what's up and you guys should, you all should be able to be in that space so that if any of us outside of CC, outside of eBoard need help, you guys, you all can help too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we still have 10 Wait, minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah. That's like, that's one question. Yeah, one question. <laughs> It took 10 minutes for us to answer that question. Oh. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to have um, Nikki have the next question. Oh, we're kind of, they sent them to the IG and like, we're I have a, I have a few. Oh, okay. Awesome. Hi. Hello. Um, it's a blessing to be here and to know that like, membership Uh, by 
the importance of PC and symposium and in general just like educational opportunities about what it takes to what 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 aspects of barrio what, what the different aspects of barrio are because with the cast of 160 people it's like it's really hard logistically just to put people in dances that you know according to everyone's time and you know what seems like bias might it, it's inevitable inevitable that there are going to be some conflicting schedules, so we have to put people in certain dances over others. But I think part of the disappointment with bias should not, like there shouldn't be, how should I say this? Um, I think by educating people beforehand, like what's going on inside Barrio, like these are the different opportunities that you guys have, that disappointment from when whatever dance you get placed in should like not, should, uh, should not be an issue with you because Honestly, you sh um, everyone, um, if you're cast in Barrio, it's, it's an opportunity to participate in Barrio. So being grateful for the different aspects of Barrio, whatever you're placed in, is really important. So I think um, stressing that, you know, not everyone's gonna be in the dance if they want to, or like, you know, not everyone's gonna, you know, there's not gonna be enough space. Um, just having full transparency with the cast ahead of time would be really helpful. <coughs> help you and to 
to decide where everyone's going. Especially, I also want to emphasize the strict guidelines because really letting them know how we're going to do it and sticking to it will also help. <laughs> um, also being on CC with these two lovely people um, and Kristen, um, I have <coughs> also heard the complaints um, and uh, I have acknowledged uh, that some of uh, the cast members feel that there are bias. But like Michaela said, Jessica, um, I just want to reiterate, uh, and what Christian said, it is really, really hard to not show bias, it, it's inevitable to not show bias, especially when you have a, a cast of 160 people. So that's where transpar transparency plays in. Um, like they said, I also think that it comes from an educational aspect. Some people, they don't go to PCN Symposium, or both of them, and then they just sign up, um, even if it was required to. So then they don't even understand um, the different aspects that go into Barrio, what the different suites entail, uh, the history behind it. So I think one thing, along with everything that they said, that we can incorporate is the information behind the suites when we do the sign out so that they know what they're getting themselves into and they're not just saying, oh, I was placed in this, but I didn't even know what it was, but you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to. Um, so I think that it's really important. Thank you. Um, I would like to motion for 10 more minutes for a cultural director. Second. Second. So um, <laughs> <laughs> our, our last question is gonna go to Nate. <laughs> um, wait, just first off, um, all the questions that go through like the Instagram and stuff, we're going to post them um, for the candidates to have the option of answering them um, through telecommunication after elections. Um, so <clears throat> first off, I just want to say like great job to each and every single one of you. Um, your passion and, and your emotion really radiates um, and it gets me exciting, it gets me excited. Um, <laughs> see, I can't even speak, I can't even speak. But, um, so my, my question for you guys, the, I want to touch on two aspects of our mission statement. Um, so obviously, the first part is, the purpose of our organization is to promote the unity and solidarity of the Philippine American community, community by creating a campus-wide environment that assertively affirms the richness and uniqueness of the many cultural experiences of our members. <laughs> and we strive to share, encourage, participate, stri strive to share, encourage participation, and educate others of the Filipino culture and community issues, as many of you have touched on, right? So my question is, how will each and every one of you provide opportunities to membership and the greater USF community to learn about the history of both Filipinx and Filipinx Americans, not only in Barrio, but also outside of Barrio? <coughs> Yeah, so, so the, the first aspect, right? Our general purpose is to promote the unity and solidarity of the Filipino-American community by creating a campus-wide environment that assertively affirms the richness and uniqueness of the many cultural experiences of members. Um, and the second part is we strive to share, encourage participation, and educate others of the Filipino culture and community issues. Um. So just basing off of what I read in the Constitution, there was a major emphasis on barrio, and that's not what our position should entail. It's way more than that. So it's unity and solidarity. It's <coughs> knowing more about our culture, Filipinx or Filipinx American, both within this space and outside of this space. So what I had said is that, like, oh, I was gonna um, to utilize our resources within this community, like just SF, like we have such a rich history within SOMA and within Kearney Street, and there's so many opportunities that we could use to go out there and for our mentors out there and our leaders out there to come to this space if we just asked. And um, like for me personally, 
I hit up Aunt Diary and asked her if I could be part of Mumu. She let me be part of Mumu. And like, that was something outside of the space that helped me kind of integrate my own identity and kind of integrate our ties between being here in America and being back home. And so just having those opportunities, they're open. They're open for us to use. And we, all we need to do is go. All we need to do is make sure that we can go to this space. It's right there. If you take the vibe, 30 minutes away. Like, come on. And like, we have Filipino Mental Health Initiative. They're right there in Bayanihan Center. We have Bindle Stiff. We have, what am I forgetting? Bataan, Kabataan. All those things that we could go to that I don't see people going to. But it's so important to know that they're there and that we have this space, these spaces, where we can enrich ourselves and to bring back to this community and also further that into other organizations like ISO, like, I'm forgetting, like the Latina, Latinx, Latinx? Latinas and Mesa? Latinas and Oh my goodness. Like, there's so many, like, parts of our culture that kind of co-integrate with other people's culture. So I remember I took Filipino-American art, and there's this girl in my class, her name is Lily. She comes from Mexican heritage, and she said that there's so many ties between our culture because they're predominantly Catholic. Our culture is predominantly Catholic. So there's ties that she was able to talk about. Even though she didn't share our culture, she shared the <coughs> stories, she shared the sense of belonging with this one aspect of religion. So we can definitely bring our history within the space to kind of show our solidarity with other people. I think it starts here. In this organization, this is a lot of people's first introduction to Philam culture, to the Philam community. I know that it can be intimidating to try and like go out there immediately. It was for me because this was my first exposure to like this kind of community when I first came to USF. So I think like starting here, like easing them into things um, like taking YPSP classes as cores, joining the Barrio Fiesta class, or even um, like collab if this is in collaboration with like the director of membership um, offering like going out into the community to bindle stiff shows to barangal workshops um, to um, soma to all of these things as commas so that they get active membership credits for it it's a it's a little bit of an incentive something that may spark a little bit of um, interest in them for them to do so because like Mimi said, we have so many resources in our community. I've outlined them, like some of the ones that I personally have been inspired to get involved in um, outside of here. I met all of those mentors here at USF. I met um, like Eric Solano or Eric Don Cuyapal, like here at USF <laughs> and they brought me into Barangal Dance Company. I, um, I've had, um, uh, I've taken Ate Irene's class and Vindal's different school arts have come in and do workshops with us and I have gone out and seen those shows. It starts with the exposure that they receive here in this university. Like that is the first step and kindling that amongst our membership that, oh, if you wanna go to this, I'll go there with you. I'll explore this with you. And not just go and experience it, but having spaces to have those kinds of conversations about it because that is even more important because that's like, <coughs> that is us exploring and furthering our identity, furthering our um, our journey towards our own culture, I cultural identity, because cultural identity does not have to mean Philippine cultural identity. Um, it could be a mix of values that you learn from this community and values that you have in your own. Um, kind of embracing all of that, and it starts with creating spaces and opportunities here, making it, <coughs> providing opportunities, but making them accessible and welcoming and encouraging for our membership, especially to the new people that are going to be coming into this organization next year. <coughs> really bouncing off that, I want to push forward <coughs> cultural exchange, especially with the other organizations on campus, because
because I know personally a lot of people come up to me that aren't Filipino <coughs> and ask me, can I join Kasongha? And I said, yes, you can. You don't have to be Filipino. And really pushing forward that you don't have to be, you don't have to be Filipino and you could just join in because we're all inclusive. We're here to welcome you guys. And working with other orgs, learning their culture while we share ours. just speaking about, about our culture, I'm speaking about all of you guys. Um, one thing that I really, really, really want um, to incorporate, well, I, right now I'm in Asian American history with James Arcidius, and, <laughs> and I find it really fascinating about uh, the different aspects in which uh, Philippine exodus and our manos and manas have um, work together with different groups um, way back when. So I think that we can, tra or we can translate and or transfer that same sense of community um, now with our different uh, types of cultural organi organizations on campus. Um, one of the, uh, or the mission statement is unity, unity and solidarity. Um, not only amongst us Filipinexes, but something that I want to create is a welcoming environment um, for all, for all to come and learn because overall this is a space um, for us to learn where we come from and to create a space uh, where we can call home, a people where, a people where who we can call family. Um, I know that I created that here. My audience um, is from Connecticut and my other audience is from Long Beach. Um, they're not from the Bay Area, um, speaking like anecdotally, listening to my audience, like in Connecticut, hey, there's not a lot of Filipinos there. <laughs> but I just, I guess what I'm trying to say is it needs to start here and really appreciating the opportunities we have to collaborate with other people and then to really establish um, that sense of community and family within ourselves. Thank you. Um, <laughs> from experience, I also took Asian American history, and um, when I told this to my cousin, who is an English major, but um, one of her uh, assignments for her class was just to come up with a research paper, and uh, after like telling her my experiences, like all these readings that I've been uh, uh, reading in Asian American history, it um, it inspired her to write her uh, her research paper on the model minority myth. And since then, she has like uh, snowballed into the, this more deeper understanding of wanting to know her culture because um, up until then, she was really um, indifferent towards Filipino <coughs> culture, but now she is an Asian studies minor. And um, it, last year was her first time watching Barrio, and she wa also watched Barrio this year. And one thing that she told me was like, you know, she posted on Instagram stories like, of, like of us performing, and she's had a lot of people, um, non-Filipino, come like reach out to her like, "Well, this is a really beautiful, like thing that you're, 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 but you're, you're, you're part of a really beautiful culture. Like, I want to know more. I want to be educated on this more." And I, I'm kind of just rambling. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not know what I'm doing with this. But um, I guess just <coughs> emphasizing that yes, education begins. Here with us, um, one of the parts of my program was, uh, or in, yeah, in my uh, platform, was uh, educating our membership on the different Filipino, Filipino cultural core values, like pakikisam, utang na loob, hiya, walang hiya. And I believe that doing so ahead of time, um, not with just within our membership, but with other, other cultural organizations, will lead us in heading into the barrio season, like the sense of uh, you know, knowing like that we're rallied uh, uh, among the, like a certain theme that we can all, um, I don't know, that we can all be inspired by as we head into Barrio. Um, so that's it from our cultural director candidates.